this is Yana Smakula for SimonSSTM.com. Welcome back for another Yipi for Yana video. By now, I'm sure you've all seen the most gorgeous TM set, Beautiful Flowers, that is included in Simon's June card kit. I could not resist this TM set and used it to create several perfectly flat one layer cards. One layer cards are not something that I do often because I always want to add something, but the floral image that I'm using today is just so perfect, there really is no need to add anything else to it. So here is a quick look at this stamp set. This is a large 6x8 set with a stunning floral arrangement that is about 7 inches wide. It's large enough to cover the entire front of an A2 card, or it can be used on a larger project as well. There are additional separate flowers in this set, and I'm yet to use them on their own. And of course, you have a number of beautiful sentiments. Uh, some are done in the currently popular open font. You have happy, loved, joy, and beautiful done in that open font. And you can keep it open, or you can color it in if you like. I'm going to start working on my card by stamping the floral cluster in Simon's Intense Black ink onto white cardstock with the help of my stamp platform to be able to double stamp it to get a nice black impression. For this card, I'm only adding one impression onto the card front, but I also made one more card where I had stamped this twice. And here's a look at that background and card. You can stamp it however many times you want. You can even mask a portion of this image to have a continuous floral background for your card. I like the look of bright, vibrant flowers on dark backgrounds, and I often color with colored pencils on dark papers. I wanted to have this floral cluster on a dark background as well, but this kind of image has a lot of detail to it, so it's not the best one to color with colored pencils. And what I mean by this is that if you add heat embossed outline, for example, it, it will be very hard to color this image. Not impossible, but just hard to color with colored pencils. Because of this, I decided to use my Copic markers and color not only the floral cluster itself, but also the background to create the illusion that these flowers sit on a dark background. I used B99 to color the background on my original card, and I just love that deep blue. For my second card, however, I wanted to change things up, and I used BG18 color. You can go with any color you like. Maybe you'd like to have a deep green or brown background or even black. You can add it to your image with the help of a marker. It is time consuming, but it's not hard to do at all. You just need to make sure to follow the lines of the stamped images and stay outside the lines. If you look closely at the photos of my cards, you'll notice that my backgrounds aren't evenly solid. The color isn't even in all the places. Now, I did not spend a lot of time adding layer upon layer of Copic coloring. So in some areas, my background color is darker and in some it is lighter. If you don't like this look, just make sure to go over your background a few times. You can also color just the background and keep your flowers white if you want. I think this also is a fabulous look. So once my background was completely colored, I started coloring the cluster. I am far from being a Copic marker expert. I just like to color just for the fun of it. What's awesome about this stamp set though, is that all the work has been already done for you. You have the areas that indicate where the shading has to be. You have open areas that indicate where your lightest colors need to go. So it's quite simple actually. I use three colors to color my leaves, YG03, YG17, and YG67. And as I color, you can see that really I'm not doing much blending or shading, but as soon as I add my base color to the image, the image already looks beautiful. And honestly, I cannot recommend the stamp set enough because of how easy it is to use it and how easy it is to create beautiful cards with its help. To color flowers, I went with yellows and pinks. It's just a classic color combination. And I used Y15, Y17, and YR14 to color the yellow blooms. Here I try doing flick style coloring. I applied my lightest color to the entire surface of the flower. And next I flicked on the medium and the dark colors. 
For the pink flower, I used RV10 for my lightest color. Here I first skipped the medium and added darkest flicks using the RV17 and later came back with a medium color, the RV13 marker. This entire coloring process, coloring the background and coloring the floral cluster, took me about 30 minutes. I think that's awesome considering the end result. I can easily make a bunch of cards like this without having to spend too much time and effort. So now that the coloring is finished, all we need to do is add a sentiment. Before I do that, I wanted to show you a few other ideas that I had uh, using this stamp set. Here I heat embossed a cluster in clear and navy embossing powders onto black cardstock. There's just something about the black that fascinates me every time I use it. I don't know what it is. I also used white pigment ink and added white highlights to the center of each flower where I did clear embossing. You can also use other colors of pigment ink to add highlights, not necessarily white. Here is a close up of the background with the navy embossing. It almost looks like foiling to me. It's very, very pretty and elegant. To add a sentiment onto my colored background, I'm going to heat emboss it in white embossing powder, slightly overlapping the florals. I did give my background a few minutes to dry, but this coloring does dry fairly quickly, especially considering that I didn't add too many layers of ink. I stamped You Are Loved so much, I added white embossing powder and I heat set it with my heat tool. Next, I adhered my background onto an A2 white side folding card base and my card was done. It's been a while since I made one layer cards and I have to say, I love the way that these turned out. I hope you guys will give this idea a try. If you do make a card inspired by this video, we'd love it if you could share your project and tag us on social media. We always enjoy seeing what you make. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done so. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye.